exceptions. Let's talk about Java exceptions. Okay, first let me write a little program that gets input from the user. We've done this before, something like this. Scanner keyboard is new. Scanner. System.in. And then uh, we gotta do the import. And then we can send int x equals keyboard dot get or dot next int. And uh, we're gonna print out you typed in and the number the person typed in. We should probably give them a prompt, prompt before that. Uh, enter number should be a print. Okay, so I have a little program there. I run it. It asks the user to enter a number, really an integer. I enter the integer and tells me what I typed in. So far, so good. Uh, let's run it again, though. And I'll run it again, and then, you know, I'm not a very good user. Uh, so I enter the number five. That's not really a number, right? That's a letter. So when I hit enter, uh, it's going to give me an input type mismatch expression. The program is going to crash. That's good. Now I know that my users are going to be doing this. So I don't want my program to crash on my users. How do I fix this? Well, if you look at uh, the next int here, description, you, you'll see you know, it returns the integers come from the input, and then it throws these three things. So it throws input mismatch exception. The next token does not match the integer regular expression or is out of range. So that's saying that if the user types in something that is not an integer, the next int method is going to throw this exception. And uh, so basically, when you throw an exception, it's another way of returning, right? So normally, you just return. The method would return, and it'll give me the value. We will go to the next line. When it throws something back at you, uh, it's a little bit different. So what we want to do is, uh, I'm going to do this the lazy way. I'm going to go under source, surround with uh, a try-catch block. So I'm going to surround all that with a try-catch block. So you see what happened there. Uh, we just typed in try, and then brackets, and then this code here. And then we close that bracket, and there's a catch, and it says exception E. And then we are over here, and this there's this statement that says print stack trace. Uh, this statement actually will just print out the same stuff you saw before when the program crashed, you know, that whole stack trace. I don't want the user to see that. Uh, well, let me just show you. Uh, again, if I enter a string, it's going to print that out. So that's what the print stack, stack, stack trace does. Don't want that. What I want is something uh, like that is not a number. So when I run this, now, oh, my console got. Small there. Uh, type in a letter. Let's see, it says uh, that is not a number. Right. So we went over here. Next int, next int. The user typed in not a number. So next int did not return. Instead, it threw an exception. And when it throws an exception, what the program is, does, it it skips all the statements in that try block, right? So in this case, it's going to skip this statement you typed in, whatever. It skips that, goes directly to the catch, and finds the first matching catch exception, in which case this one, and it does that. So then it runs, executes this part. Then after that, it just keeps going and will run this part, the end. So I'm going to run this again, and then I'm going to enter. Add, and you see it does, it prints out the end over there. 
Uh, so, and just to double check, I'm going to try with the number. So if I enter 88, it says you typed in 88 at the end. So when you do type in a number, it does not go to the catch exception. Uh, and uh, it just skips the catch part and just goes till the end, to the next statement. Uh, we should probably put that there. Um, okay, so that is how you catch an exception. Now, what if you wanted to throw an exception? So I'm going to create a public uh, static, um, say, integer or uh, string n times integer n string and name. And uh, so what this is going to do it uh, is going to repeat name n times. Right. So we're just gonna have, let me just write that quickly. String result. I'm gonna start with an, the empty string and then I say for integer i equals zero i less than n i plus plus. I'm gonna do a result plus equal name. Just a little loop there just to show some code. And it's going to return result. So it is going to, re whatever name I give it, it's going to repeat it n times and, you know, concatenate it and return that. Um, so that should work fine. Uh, I'm going to put that over here. Let's say, uh, says out n times uh, three. Oh. You know, going to be Santa Claus. I run that and uh, ho, 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 enter number. So, okay, that works. Um, but what if I want to, you know, uh, maybe my, I want to make sure that if somebody calls this with a negative number, uh, then it throws an exception. So I can do that. I can say if n is less than zero, then I want to throw a new exception and I can give it a name. I can put some English here to say, you know, uh, n must be a pos positive number. And I can further, you know, say, well, you pass me n equals n. So I can do that. So now if I call this with a negative number, it would n less than zero, it goes to here, and it's going to throw that exception. You see, it still doesn't work. Um, if I command one that Eclipse is going to tell me I need to add a throws declaration. So I'm going to do that. There you go. So th this is what I was missing. So when you have a throw within a method, like I just did here, you also need to put a throw here in the signature. So it has to say public static, the return type, the declaration with the arguments, and then throws, and then the exception, the type of exception that you're throwing in this case is just exception. Um, so now that works, but now I get this problem over here. Uh, let's see what that is. And it says, uh, that basically, you know, I'm calling this function, this method here, n times, that throws an exception. And because of that, I have to surround this guy now with a try catch block. Right. So I'm going to go here and get rid of that to do. And now it should work, right? So I just put in another try catch block around the n times. Uh, so if n times throws an exception, it's going to go down to here. Let me just, instead of doing a track stack trace, I'm going to say, uh, oops, my bad. So when I run that, um, run that, it's going to work fine because three, if you look at the code over here, uh, three is positive, right? So it's bigger than zero. So that's fine. But well, what if that was minus eight? I run that and then it prints, oops, my bad. And then it keeps going, right? 
So it's going to run here. It calls n times. That throws this exception, so this loop never happens. Uh, we come back to the exception over here, and we print out that thing. Uh, by the way, uh, I should have done this before. Um, I could have just printed out the exception E1. Uh, let me run that. And you see, when I print out the exception, this E1 that I got, that's the exception. It says Java language exception, and then N must be a positive integer, which is this, what I put over here. Uh, similarly, I can do the same here. I have this exception here. I can uh, print out that it's not a number and then print out the actual exception E. Uh, that the program returns. And I can run that. So that's the first exception. And then if I type in not an integer, then it's going to print out that it's not a number. And this is the actual exception input mismatch exception you can look uh, you can look that up so that is how you use an exception and that is how you throw an exception mostly you're going to use exceptions are used only in exceptional times so you're only going to use exceptions when or throw an exception when something really unexpected goes wrong you this usually means you're accessing the hard drive and you know it times out or the user you know expecting the user to do something and he you know does something unexpected or you're getting data from the internet and it's down so you time out waiting for data to come in so it has to be something exceptional generally so we try not to use exceptions so try to minimize the use of, of exceptions unless it's something that is really exceptional. Because as you can see, they make your program harder to understand, harder to see what's going on. Um,